Welcome to our Idiom Lucid Automation Testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium Automation Testing, which will help you understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium Automation Project. You may access our test project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. In today's video, we're going to show you how you can set up your own Selenium Java Maven project using the IDE NetBeans. So here are some things that we'll cover in this video. The first thing we're going to show you uh, is how to download and install NetBeans with Java. Actually, we're just going to include a link to this in the description below, so you can just go ahead and download and install NetBeans in by yourself. Next, what we're going to show you is we're going to show you how we can update our pom.xml file so that we have all the dependencies that we need. For instance, Java, uh, Selenium Java, Maven, JUnit, and so on. The next thing we're going to show you is how we can configure our project with different packages and classes. We're also going to show you how we can create a class to take screenshots of our testing. We're also going to show you how we can implement extent reports in our own little project in NetBeans. Also show you how to use Grid, Docker, and so on. So when you, after you install NetBeams and you open it up, this is what it will generally look like. And if you wanted to create your own project, you can just go ahead and click File, New Project, just Java with Maven, Java right here, and you click Next, and then you can just name your project. So for this project, I'm just gonna name it video NetBeans. Go ahead and create the project. And after you create the project, this is generally what you get. So under the project files right here, if you click this arrow, you'll get a palm.xml file here. And what you want to do in the palm.xml file, the first thing you want to do is you want to import your dependencies. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in dependencies so I have that and then I will type in dependencies again and now I can put all my dependencies inside here so the first dependency that I want to uh, bring over is selenium java maven so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over using this nice little website we have here called Maven Repository. Uh, and I'm going to copy over the dependencies for Selenium Java 4.15.0. So I can just go ahead and copy this uh, copy and I will just paste it here and Nice. So that's good. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to one of my older projects and I'm going to copy over some dependencies to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and paste. And so I have some issues right here. So I go ahead and delete that. I don't need that right there. That is extra. And what I basically did was I copied over some dependencies. So the first uh, one right here. This is for Maven, so using different Maven plugins. The second one right here is using JUnit. And then I have the dependencies for using extent reports, uh, OpenCSV, which allows us to open CSV files, uh, JUnit Jupyter as well, as well as MySQL, which allows us to connect to databases later uh, and basically fetch data from databases. So yeah, so that is our pom.xml file. And now what I'm going to show you is how we can basically create different packages for ourselves and also create little classes under it. So for instance, if you go to here, you can go here and you can click new Java package. And some packages that you want to have, for instance, is the config package. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and name this config. And it basically creates a config package. And usually what you like to have under the config package is you want to have a configuration file. And so what you can do is 
you can create a configuration file under this config package. Some other things that you can have is the controller package, for instance. You just right click uh, right here, and then you click new, and then you go Java package, and I'm just gonna name it controller. And this will contain all the different classes that you want uh, in order to run later. And then also you will have a test package as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in, uh, actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead, new Java package, and this will just be test package. And then this is the basic structure that we will have uh, when creating our uh, projects. Okay, so now what I did was I basically created a new pest package here and I basically added all the different things in so that we can see what a functional project in NetBeans looks like. So we're gonna ignore this project that we created earlier and I'm just gonna show you and walk you through what a functional project in NetBeans looks like. So first thing I'm gonna show you is I wanna go here and I wanna show you that the pom.xml file we have here, it contains all the dependencies that we stated earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Uh, you see it's all, all the different dependencies I showed you earlier. Uh, next, what I'm gonna show you is under what we have, we also have, um, oops, uh, I'm gonna go over here, source packages. And under source packages, we have the config package that we talked about earlier, and we have the config.properties file. And if I open this up, this is basically what it is. It contains your, your username, passwords, the different URLs you wanna access, as well as local directory information for uh, directories to store things. For example, the report, directories to store the screenshots, downloads, and also where you can fetch CSVs. So this is a nice little file that you can have under your config package uh, to basically be able to access everything uh, in your project. So I'm gonna close that. Next, I'm gonna show you the controller package. And here what we have under the controller package is we have several different classes that do different functionalities. The first is the base class, which basically contains a bunch of different functions that other classes can use. So for instance, what I mean is uh, this first class right here, test browser, it basically creates a browser instance so that we can start testing. And we see that it can create a Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari instance, uh, just depending on whatever parameters that you give it. And we see that it basically just uses Chrome options, Firefox options, Edge options, and Safari options. There are some other different, different functions that you can call in this class, for example, clicking a button, uh, entering text, uh, clicking, uh, selecting from a drop-down list, as well as accepting alerts and closing browsers, and so on. So this is a nice little class to have in your code to simplify other classes because they can just call this class to perform those basic operations. Next, I'm gonna show you the booking class. And this class basically performs booking on the website that we wanna test. And so we see this function right here. Uh, basically what it does is it goes to the URL that we report it to, uh, so this browser URL, and it basically goes to the different, uh, to the different, to the field and the, basically the form, and it fills out the form with these information, and then it enters the information. And so this is basically the book in class, and then you can also do some other operations. There's also some other functions to perform some more advanced operations as well. Uh, for instance, down here, uh, this one basically allows us to select different um, select different details for the golf course. So from a different location, we we from the website a different location on the website, we basically select a different golf course and we book it and then we enter our information into the fields. So that's the booking class. Next, we also have a Docker class which allows us to use Docker with our Selenium project. And this one, I will actually go in more detail probably in the future in different videos. We have a previous video that we showed how to use Docker with um, a different IDE. So previously we used IntelliJ, uh, but this time we're gonna show you how we can use it in NetBeans. And basically, yeah, it just uses a Docker. And then we have golf class, which basically allows us to 
uh, for example, search for a golf course right here. Um, and it also has some different functionalities. For example, um, in this one, for, we use this thing called data-driven testing, which allows us to get data from three different methods. The first is an array. So this is what this first function does, is it has all this information uh, for us in an array. And basically what it does is we, um, we have right here, we are able to basically create a new golf course using this information or search for golf courses using this information. And in our case right here, we're basically searching for the golf course using the information that we get. And that is through an array. The second method in data driven testing is we can get our information through a CSV. And in this one, it basically reads the CSV and then using the different properties in the CSV, it searches for the golf courses that we're looking for. And of course, the third one is using databases. So this one, it uses uh, SQL and so you see right here, MySQL, and it basically fetches the information from SQL uh, from their different data frames. Uh, and it basically searches for that using information from SQL. So those are the three different things that we have. And then we have some other different functionalities, for example, listing the golf courses. So showing the golf courses by the country, um, adding a golf course, sorting golf courses by their names, and so on and so on. We also have another different controller class here, and this controller class is uh, Grid, and it basically uses the Grid Hub different functionalities to perform uh, testing on different grids and so on. And this one, again, uh, we will explain in more detail how it works. Uh, but if you look at our previous videos, we have another previous video explaining uh, grids in Selenium as well. And also, we have the last one, which is the login. And the login basically, uh, right here, it basically logs us into the website. And uh, again, so these login information that we have here, we actually stored it in our config package so that we can uh, retrieve it nicely. And we see that it uses test manager to retrieve that. And so this test manager I actually haven't talked about, we'll go on to that next. So that's under the manager package. And in the manager package, we have three different classes again. So I'm gonna close the previous classes. The first one is the screenshot class. And this class, as the name suggests, what it does is it basically takes a screenshot uh, what we have on our screen. And this is the code that it does to take the screenshot. The next thing is test manager. And this test manager is basically um, helps us retrieve all the different information. For example, it helps us retrieve the username, the password, and the URLs, uh, and the different download locations and screenshots from our config file. Next, we have UI manager, which basically is what we have right here. And this basically just helps us uh, enter the login information, uh, create a new login uh, uh, instance and book instance and golf instance and so on. So after that, I'm gonna show you this web element uh, package. So we have another package here. I know there's a lot of different packages, but this is the last package in the source packages. Uh, and this package basically, basically it contains all the different web elements that we have on our website. So for instance, if we look at the book and text date right here, it tells us the web element, uh, the locator for the different web elements that we have that we might need for the booking class uh, for in the controller package. And then same thing for the golf, it contains all the different web element locators for the golf uh, class and the login class and the page object class as well. So that's very straightforward. So to conclude, uh, what we're gonna show you is our final package and that's the test package. And in the test package, we have a few different classes. And basically what these classes do is they call the controller class and they basically perform the testing. So if we go to book in edge, for instance, we see that it calls the different classes that we are, uh, the different functions within the classes in the controller package, and then it gives us a result. And so I'm gonna show you uh, two of these. So I'm gonna do the booking edge and I'm gonna do the golf Chrome one. So what I can do uh, to run it is basically right click booking right here and then click test file.
and it's going to create a pop-up window right here. And basically, it will perform the different testing that we uh, specified. And in this case, it basically creates a golf course or books a golf course. And it shows us our booking right here. Okay. Uh, and after it's done, it will basically close it. And then it will perform. So there's another part of the testing. So I'm going to drag the window over. Uh, it's right here. Basically, it creates the booking from a different location and it creates the booking as well. So after it's done, it should close the window by itself. There we go. And that is basically what this class does. And if I want to show you our results, what I can do is I can go to the folder that we specified the extent report and screenshots, and I can open it up and it'll basically give us our extent report for the booking uh, testing. And next I'm going to show you for the golf course. So I'm going to open this and I'm going to show you basically you see it uses it calls a search golf course from CSV and the list golf course by country. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, run this. So again, drag the window over. So it searches the golf course. And now it will perform the second part, drag it over. And yeah, there we go. Uh, that is done. So it finishes running that. And yeah, so basically I hope this video gave you a sort of overview how we can create our own little Selenium Java project using NetBeans IDE. In this project, uh, in this video, we showed you sort of the general packages that you want to have in your own project. For instance, the config package, the controller package, the manager package, the web element package, and, and finally the test package. We also showed you that you want to update how you can update your Palm XML file to create all the different dependencies that you need and basically have your uh, own little project up and uh, running. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.